I don't know, sir. It's on all channels. Please stand by. Hello and welcome to Road Rash Radio. I'm your host, Ninja XD, and we are joined today by the infamous and the legendary Throttle Therapy, a.k.a. Brooke Carlson. Road Rash Radio is a whole lot about riding sport bikes, some bar stories and some travel stories, and more about riding sport bikes. We do any type of thrill-seeking activity that will get your heart rate going, and then after we talk about it on this show. Every week in our Adventure of the Week segment, we'll discuss what activities we got into recently and what we're hoping to get into next week. The rest of the podcast is us discussing topics within the motorcycle riding community and our daily adventures and goals. All right, so you want to get started on how we uh, how we met first? Yeah, just give them a little bit of background. All right, so we met up at a loading dock in West Virginia over in, I guess it's Fayetteville, right? It's not Oak Hill. Yeah, yeah. We met up there, uh, loading dock at night, or, well, early mornings. We was up there, sucked, whatever, we did our thing. Ended up parting ways, mm-hmm. uh, kind of kept in touch. I got a, so I looked in the Old Mountain Trader, which is like a, where people buy and sell stuff. The West they, Virginia equivalent of eBay. Right, right. Before Facebook was a big thing and whatever. And I found a, yeah, and I found a, it was a 500 Ninja. And I got it as a first bike. Because I was tired of riding my dirt bike on the main roads. And I kind of, I mean, there was a lot of stuff wrong with it. I mean, I laid it down so many times. Oh, I don't know if I told you or not, but the first time I took it out in the main road, literally hours after I got it, the front right cow piece, you remember that, that I fiberglassed back up? it on. Yeah. yeah, well, it was broken when I got it. I don't know if I ever told you that. Because I felt something punching me in the leg, and I looked down, and it was the front cow piece. And that's, I don't know if you noticed, but it had a, it was a Coca-Cola uh, bottle cap with a screw in the middle of it holding it to the frame. Yeah. That's what it was. The whole side uh, of the, the cow uh, piece kept hitting me in the leg. That was whenever it was purple, before I painted yeah. it black. <laughs> they were using the freaking Coke cap as a freaking washer. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I mean, I laid that thing down so many times. Well, that's that's actually how I learned to fiberglass, was with that bike, and learned to paint, was with that bike. I remember I was telling you about it. And That was when, yeah, that's how, that's how that happened, was you hit me up after we had parted ways when we left working at the loading dock and said, I just got this bike and you wanted to find out where I was so you could bring it by for me to check it out. Yeah, that's right. When we first started out, we were running around trying to do the street racing tuner thing all the time, and it was just constantly... It was constantly expensive. It, yeah. was, it was expensive and uh, dangerous because, you know, I mean, it, it, it's hard to get away from people and... Mops and accidents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you're on four, on a you know ton vehicle or whatever but yeah we we uh i hollered at you about you know how i thought motorcycles were cool and everything and you should probably get one and uh i remember you were kind of going back and forth about it i think you still had some car stuff you were working on it was kind of money wise yeah i never i hadn't gotten the bug yet i hadn't gotten hooked and i didn't know i didn't know whether i could afford it and so you upgraded probably a year and a half. Wait, after was that you was that Ninja. was that Ranger Brook? Yeah, this that was Ranger, back when Ford I was still Ranger? rolling. Yeah, no, 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 it wasn't. No, it wasn't because this was after this was after I had wrecked the uh, the golf running with you. The first time. Yeah, after I'd wrecked the Volkswagen. Yeah. Wait, behind Lowe's. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Because, because I remember, I remember talking to my dad, and I was like, "My buddy has this street bike because he just got a new one, and he's practically giving me the thing because he wants somebody to ride with." Right. And I was like, "Man, I'm tired of wrecking cars, Dad. I know it's eating up all this money and blah blah blah." And I was like, "I, I don't have the money to be in the in the, the sport car game right now, but I was like, I gotta have something that goes fast." And I, I was, I told him I thought I might get a truck and a, and a bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember you were still kind of going back and forth uh, about it, and I said uh, yeah. I was having some problems with it. It kept dying. I've been working on that, but I took mine out and you took the 500. I had a 636. We went out to, I guess it was the Lowe's, the Lowe's parking lot. 
Yeah, yeah, it was a Lowe's parking lot in in Beckley, and we went up there, and it was it was on. I was hooked just no, like that. No, that's not what happened. I took my car out there. You're, I think you drove my car, and I drove the bike out there because you wasn't too sure about getting on the main road yet. And then yeah, and then I yeah, rode it around yeah. the parking lot. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, you were you felt uh, good about driving it around. And dude, I know, like you came back around and you talked to me for the first time. I was like, this guy's hooked. Like. I, I don't need to say anything yeah, else. Way, this guy's hooked. See, you did it. You did it piece by piece by piece. Because yeah. at first, at first, you were like, "Listen," because I had I had not I had ridden dirt bikes, but it had been I was a little kid when I had ridden when I had ridden dirt bikes. I didn't own a dirt bike at the time. It had been years since I was on one. Yeah. And I was like, "Dude, I can't even remember how to shift gears." And you were like, "Listen, man. You were like, you don't need to shift gears. Just go." Your road is right, you know, right there, and it's a straight stretch. You were like, just go up the road in first gear and turn around and come back in first gear. And then if you want to ride it more, then we'll go to the parking lot. Yeah, that's right. I'm, that's right. I'm like, whatever. I'm like, whatever. You know, I'll get them off my back. Well, I'm thinking first gear, you know, like dirt bike first gear. And I didn't know. I mean, I knew it was going to have some power to it, but I didn't. I had not ever been on an actual like, yeah. road with a motorcycle. Dirt bike and I street bike and are completely different. the shit out of this thing and just redline this thing in first gear going up the straight stretch. And I'm like, holy shit, this is fun. This is fun as fuck. Yeah, yeah. So I turn around and bring it back, and, and, and you're just looking at me. I'm like, bro, let's go to the parking lot. Yeah, like, yep, yep. <laughs> And then whenever we got finished with the parking lot, um, I let you drive it back, but you went beside of Burger King over here, and it just died. And I remember yeah. we were working on it. I mean, it was a pain. I forget how we ended up getting it, but I, I remember that no matter what happened to the bike, you were hooked, and that that's what you wanted to do. So I wasn't oh, really too w- concerned about keeping up the mystique about... How, whether it ran well or not. <laughs> about. Yeah. So, anyways... Um, after you got it, it was the first time that we actually went on the on the new main road up here. I changed the brakes on it, and we didn't have the brake calipers. or I mean, the brake... Uh, we couldn't find the bolts to put the brake calipers on. Right, yeah. And we had, one, we had one, but that was all we had for the front brake caliper. It was one of my dad's bolts from up at Lowe's, and I only had one. So I thought I would just hook it on the top and we'd be good to go. The, so I, again, this is literally like all the first, you know, this is uh, the thing had died at the Burger King the night before this. So this is the next day on a Saturday. Right. And now it's like we got a new battery in it, which is what the problem was, and we're off and running. So we go out on the new highway and we're flying along like any, you know, red-blooded American male. Oh, yeah. The speed limit is about 70, so we're doing probably 85 on these things. Surely nothing's going to happen, right? Because I don't know anything about this, so we're not actually running them hard. I'm not, I don't know shit what I'm doing. So we're going at this, uh, we're going, we're approaching an intersection, and we're still a good ways away, like a few hundred feet. And I go to pull my brake, and the handle goes straight, it, the, <laughs> the lever, the front brake lever goes straight to the handle, and I've got nothing. And I look down, and I'm, I'm freaking out. Like, I've got no experience. I can't remember at first to hit the back, the back brake. And I'm like, what is going on? And I look down, and I can see the front brake caliper dangling off of this, dangling <laughs> off of its brake, just flopping around in the air. And I'm like, okay, well, that's definitely not going to stop the thing. Then I remember the back brake, and I'm, I'm, losing, I'm losing inches towards this red light the whole time. But I remember the back, the back brake, and I locked the back brake well, up. Wait, wait, wait. You didn't mention that there was traffic. Oh, there's traffic going the it, whole it, time. It the red the light. Yeah, there's people stopped, and you're heading straight towards the back of this. I think it was like a uh, an Impala or something, but you were heading towards it fast. You saw the I, – I mean, I – so you I, I locked vision. the back brake up, and I'm fishtailing. Yeah. And then I'm like, I think I'm going to get it stopped. Like, I think I'm good. And it's still wiggling a little, fishtailing around. I'm still probably going at like 30 or something. Yeah. But I'm like, I think I'm good. I think I'm going to get it stopped. And then right as I'm going along in a fishtail with it kicked sideways a little bit, I hit some gravel coming into the intersection, like just a little bit near the center line. And you saw the rest from a better angle than I did. (laughs) All right. So what I saw was I was ahead of you, and then you went and passed me. 
And I, I didn't know what was going on until I, you, you were kind of looking at the handlebars and panicking a little bit. And then I saw, I will never forget this. I will never forget this. The bottom of your white tennis shoes that you had, I can't remember what they were, but I remember seeing out of this they were, quarter. They were fucking white Timberlands. They That's, were like white Timberland. <laughs> yeah, they were white. And I remember a white flash because they were like, in my peripheral and i'm like oh no this can't be good so, <laughs> so i look over and you you're you're swinging the back end like a bat towards uh towards all those people sitting at the red light and you i mean you miss them you hit gravel and you go down in this drainage ditch that i mean i would easily say it was i mean it was you know it wasn't a drop off you because you ran it back up but i mean it was about a foot and it a half, a two feet ditch. down. Yeah. It, whenever yeah. you fell down into it, people couldn't see you. It was just like, was oh, sliding, he's gone. You were sliding down a trough, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I take that right, and there's a, uh, a hospital right next to it. I park in that hospital parking lot and start running through the grass. And I'm like, Brooke, you all right? And then you straight adrenaline rushed this. Uh, how much do you, would you think it weighed? Like six I mean dude it's 600 550 pounds? it's 550 for sure 550 pounds for sure so you're i mean no momentum just straight adrenaline pulling this thing back up the uh back up this like concrete gravel all pea gravel all over the place straight back up on the road nobody's asking if you're all right and then uh santa claus comes by on a, on a harley davis including a freaking harley rider that goes by and just gives me the business like glares at me with his old lady on the back it doesn't even slow down no no so i'm running over and i see you pulling up your bike and here comes santa claus on his harley with mrs claus on the back i mean literally looks exactly like him i mean it was ridiculous yeah. and he just straight glares at you doesn't even ask if you're all right doesn't give you the thumbs up you know nothing just stares at you shakes his head and uh goes ahead and he hits that left turn and he's out doesn't say a word and i'm over here it's not like oh he just dropped it he's all right no dude you're dropping it and there's another bike running over to you hollering at you not even a word yeah. didn't even check dude like <laughs> You, like you were in bad shape, and the environment was in bad shape, or whatever. Yeah, there was nothing good about the situation. No, it was nothing good. So, anyways, we take the bike back down to my house, which is you know just down the road, and you're using the back brake uh, instead of being like most people, you know. I, I, I wrecked it. I laid it down. You know. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. You, you were like, uh, you know what? I think I could drive it all the way back to Fayetteville, which is about 30, 35 minutes away from where I live. Uh, back roads turns. I think I could just use the back brake and we'll uh, hook up the front brakes later. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, dude, this guy, after it breaking down and then after he wrecked it all within like this first two days that he's ever like been on a street bike, a ride Lifer. brother for life. Yeah, dude, there ain't, there ain't no getting over it. And ever since then, bro, we've both went down so many times. You've hit guardrails. I've hit other vehicles. And I mean, we're still at it. And that really says a lot. Yeah, I mean, in in hindsight, like after riding for a while and, and having the whole learning curve of you get better and so you get your confidence up and then you start riding super aggressive all the time and then you wreck more because you're riding super aggressive and then you realize to ride aggressive some of the time and not go balls out when you don't know the road. And so the whole learning curve for us, it took about three wrecks each before we actually started really figuring shit out. Yeah. And it, honestly, the they made that wreck pale in comparison. I mean, you and I had some, we've had we've had some uh, some injuries and some <laughs> stuff that that never. I mean, I've never really fully gotten my 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 uh, right knee back one hundred percent. And there's definitely some stuff we've had to sacrifice for sure from the wrecks. Yeah, we not I to mean, mention, not to mention tens of thousands of dollars more than anything. Just spoil spoiler spoiler alert. We uh, both have uh, right knee injuries from different wrecks at different times, and uh, swelling is never going right to go away. They both have never gone away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, numb, numb probably for the rest of but our lives. I would rather have that than, uh, you than know, not ride. Than not ride, right, or, you know, in your life, whatever. I still have to get up and kind of stretch my knee every morning, so it's pliable, I guess. But it's just yeah. one of them, those things, you know. It's it's if to everyone else if if you don't 
if you aren't really dedicated to the sport, we just sound like meathead idiots. But honestly, I'm not doing it in that kind of way to show off, but more to showcase that this is something we're truly passionate about and we're willing to sacrifice a lot to stay on two wheels. And I think it goes from, you know, if you if you lay it down or if you wreck and you get back up, that's good. But also, if you get in trouble, uh, this is something we haven't yeah. really talked about, but if you actually get in trouble with... Uh, I don't know, with other people, if you, you know, get into your first kind of uh, argument in traffic, uh, maybe if yep. maybe if you're holding your throttle cable with pliers because it fell apart on the Nuvergorge Bridge and, like, they're pissed at you because you're raw dogging it. Just to keep the thing loud. I, I think, you know, I think there's a story about that with somebody or local, uh, local PD local. or whatever. Yeah, but your first run in with the police or with other people and if you're still going on, I think it says the same thing about wrecking and still staying, you know? Yeah, I agree. It's a lifestyle. It's a tight-knit group. I, I don't know. It's just a family that you don't really know. It's a family that you've never really met all of them, and you never will. Yeah, and you uh, you know a lot of the people that are the some of the better friends that I've made within the community, I was eating dinner at their house the same day I met them because we got caught in a storm. You know, like there's – it really is – it's cliched and everybody says it, but it really is a really tight knit community. When you're, it's, it's what you said before, you know, I remember you saying once, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Even the dullest guardrail is really sharp at anything over like 30 miles an hour. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> whenever you're looking, whenever you're looking at, you know, every time you go down, you got a good risk of, of dying or a good risk of, if nothing else, getting seriously hurt continuing to do whatever activity that that's that you're risking that you know that's a that's a bond and i think after i think after you've ridden for a while you've seen a lot of friends go down in front of you i know that you and i both have watched each other go down in front of each other and that's <laughs> when it's somebody you really care about and it's not like a casual friend and you guys are on some big group ride you know you're watching somebody you really care about that's like family go down hard right in front of you you know right into the back of cars right into whatever it's and uh, you walk up and you think somebody's dead, and it's 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 a wild feeling. And if you stay with it longer, you know, in the long run, there's eventually, and I hate to say it, but a lot of people you can tell who is more likely, you know. And there's a lot of people that die. If you if you ride for a few years, you'll definitely go to some funerals within within the community you ride with if 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 you stay with it long enough. Yeah. And I think it has a lot to do with just something you're born with, because yeah, I remember I think there's a natural ability there for sure with some people. And prime example of that is the last wreck I was in, and I went down. The first thing you did was you didn't like run over or you didn't panic, you didn't freak out. The first thing you did was whip out your phone because you were getting ready to call the ambulance, but you didn't dial it. You didn't dial it. You waited for a second. You didn't panic, and I got up. So instead of worrying about me you were worrying about my bike. And I think that's not something you learn. That's just something that you're either born it happens or not. from It happens from watching watching each other go down like that so many times. Like, right. it, yeah, it, yeah. you call it what you want, but you get desensitized after a while, you know? That's true. Because, I mean, a normal person, like, you know, whenever I, I hit the back of that car and it was just me and people at a yard sale that was there next to the road. I mean, they were freaking out, panicking, screaming that I remember. And, I mean, I got up and whatever. I got my bike. Everything was fine. But, I mean, they were sheer panic. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, I don't know. It's definitely, I feel like, I feel like as we've gotten older and matured on our, on our, on our bikes, we've gotten to be better riders so that we can handle the aggressive riding better when we do do it. And we know when not to do it. But I think that uh, for everybody else, man, they see somebody go down and it's not something, it, you know, everyone's always shocked when you manage to even make it through wrecks. And that's the other thing that's funny is like, you know, people people by just the roll of the dice make it out of stuff that's absolutely, you know, a terrible wreck. And when you look at the results, you know, you got a broken finger or something else small and it doesn't look like you went down at 80 right into the back of a car, you know, like <laughs> it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's a funny thing. Like, like chance, chance is a weird thing. There's a lot of wrecks that we've made it out of where other people are flipping out and we're trying to convince people that we're fine. And in the end, a lot of times we wound up riding our bikes back from stuff that's just 
ridiculous. Like yours into the back of that car. You, if I remember right, you. Uh, yeah. When home. the last when we went to get your bike, it was like the next day maybe. You were out of the hospital. You had a cast on your thumb, which you promptly took off and rode this thing home. And your leg was, your leg was pretty jacked up. But I mean, you went down. You went from not even getting to hit the brakes a little, like full-blown 80 miles an hour straight in the it back It was right of the past a turn. Yeah, I was late for getting my hair cut on an appointment or whatever. Yeah. You, well, you said you came around the turn and you were just looking at the guy. He was parked in the middle of the road. I mean, this is a story for another time, but he was parked in another road looking at a Volkswagen Beetle that was a lawn ornament. Literally, a lawn. it had potted plants in it because it was in somebody's yard. Like it was, and he had he was stuck. Oh, it, okay, you know, it was well, we'll go back. Yeah, I mean, I hit it, and um, after you know flipping into the uh, into the garden, uh, I get back up. You know, whatever. I called Josh because I figured uh, he could bring his truck over and get my bike. By the time he got there, and I already told the ambulance people I was fine, and they can go ahead and leave. I was like, no, nah, I'm fine. I don't I don't need to be inspected or whatever. I'm good. And uh, I remember that Josh took my helmet whenever he got there because I did have a concussion. And I remember talking to Blaine. He got that concussion, and then, uh, but that was from a car wreck. And he yeah. passed out, and that's how he broke almost every bone in his body was he went over the guardrail after he rode his bike after the car wreck. So I remembered that. So he held my helmet, and I just rode. I mean, it was like a mile away where I live. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I rode it home, dude. I mean, it was your situation. The calipers were hanging off of it. I mean, I had green paint on my pants from where I gripped that gas tank so hard <laughs> right before. I mean, I still had those pants, big green streak on the inside of the thigh, dude, uh, and red on the outside from where I hit that bumper. But, I mean, you know. You walk away, though. You know, you walk away from more stuff than people expect. And I know that I know personally a guy that was related to me that he died in a – he died hitting a lady at 25 in a parking lot and was dead instantly. So I feel like when it's not, you know, in, in a car. And so I feel like when it's not your time, it's not your time. And, and you make it out of a lot more than what some people think. Well, actually, maybe, you know. Maybe being desensitized to the wrecks isn't a good thing, but it definitely is something that happens. Like you get, you let, you it get a lot over less. It happens over time. Death. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when uh, one of our buddies, call it, we'll call him Bobby, when one of our buddies went down uh, in front of me on some uh, train tracks that were super sketchy. I remember the first thing he said after is he was like, "It was his first. It was his first time laying it down, and it was a pretty hard lay down." And he was like, "Well, good man." He was like, "I uh, I've been waiting for it, and I'm glad I got the first the first one over with, and I think <laughs> I can learn from it." And he was like, "And I think I'm I'm ready to do it again." Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I remember there was a guy down the street right here at the, the junkyard at the first turn. The reason they had that fence up is because he didn't make that turn and he got decapitated by a tree branch. Yeah. That was what, three or four years ago? He wasn't on a street bike. Yeah. He was on, uh, I think it was like a 1500, some kind of Honda or a Harley or something. I don't really remember, but. Yeah. You know, just it definitely. Turn. It's the luck of the draw, man. Well, I think that's all we're going to do for uh, for this episode. And I wanted to mention, uh, you were kind of talking about it before. Our uh, what, what's it called? Adventure of the week segment. We'll call it. We'll call it raw riding adventure of the week. Riding adventure of the week, and that's going to be. We're going to have that'll uh, be our, that'll be our last segment of the day, and then after that, we'll we'll probably wrap it. We'll keep things to about an hour. Yeah, that makes sense. Hour, so maybe I, less. mine isn't quite mine isn't quite riding related, but it is it is for half the story. <laughs> All right. The uh, the recent trip that I was on, I visited my uh, my granddad up in New Hampshire. Yeah. And after that, I had to drop my uh, my vehicle off at a garage because the uh, the thing was having problems, and I had to take my bike back from my parents' place where the garage is up to where I go to college. Well, I forgot that I had a bunch of stuff I needed with me at college in my car, and it wound up being about 90 pounds worth of gear, like literally 90 pounds. I work construction. I know what 100 pounds feel like. I uh, I had to put this, I had to put this stuff in a gym bag, and 
tie the gym bag on and wear it like a backpack. And uh, it was a two-hour ride in the 40s with rain. And this is, you know, this is January. It is not, it was not comfortable. Right. Yeah, this was this was January. This is like a week and a half ago, and I made it. I made it back, but I mean, it was so much weight. I had like rope burn on my shoulders afterward. When I got back, <laughs> I had like, I had like literally had like rope burn on my shoulders on either side, and it was like it was it was hard to breathe. Like it was so much weight. When I would be in like turns and stuff, you could feel like breathing up for a big breath. Anything like that going over Golly Mountain when you're like feeling it, you know, and you're breathing hard and you're in the zone. It was literally hard to like get a nice big full breath because of how much weight. And not to mention, you know, a gym bag is not a backpack. It was sloppy as hell. It was flopping all over the place. It was just it was one a, strap, wasn't it? Yeah, I could only get one strap on there because I had the other one holding my skateboard onto the outside of it. <laughs> I had my skateboard like twisted, the other the other strap like twisted and tied up all around it. Yeah. <laughs> holding the freaking skateboard on. But the uh, the other the other part was uh, right before. This was um, this was the same twenty four hours as that ride. I got to explore a frozen lake. This was right before we drove back from New Hampshire. Yeah. And uh, it was really interesting. It was a little sketchy because I was by myself, and when I found when I found the area, which is near my granddad's spot, I. Uh, I had the sun going down on me, but I got to check this island in the middle of the lake out. And normally, I've seen this lake a million times, and I've never once been able to make it up there. You know, for starters, because screw going to anywhere that far north in the winter. But once I was up there anyway, I got to see the lake while it was frozen, and I actually got to just walk across the ice all the way out to this island, which was really sweet. And it was a uh, it was kind of sketchy to do by myself, but I'm gonna be honest. What was going through my head was if if I break through at any point, it's super thick. But there were some shallow spots, like there were some spots where you might have actually been a little at risk. Yeah. But it's not moving water. So what I kept telling myself was that if uh, if I did go through, I'd be able to like slow down, open my eyes, you know, look up and find my hole and get back out because it's not moving water. <laughs> I don't know how realistic that is, but that's what I that's what I used to get myself talked into it. But I made it all the way out to the island and checked it out, and it was pretty cool. There wasn't really much there. It uh, it had a uh, New England has a ton of pine trees, so it had some really cool big pine trees. It was really pretty, but there wasn't really anything there. But it was um, it was really sweet to be able to make it that far out to actually look at the island, and it's a place that you know, like the best adventures. You always in your head, you know, see something that you can't reach, you know, or you actually get to look at something that you can't get to. And you're like, man, I wonder what's up there, you know, or I wonder what's over there. And it's so cool after years, literally years of staring out at that island. And whenever I'm there, I've never had a canoe or anything to be able to actually make it out to that island and explore it is something I've wanted to do for years. So that was a really sweet little perk of being able to go up there this late in the winter. And where was it at? This was in New Hampshire. It's about a 13 and a half hour drive away. It's a, uh, it's a bitch. Dad and me ran it in that, in that long. Normally it's about 16 hours, but we're just going fast as we can and hardly making any stops. It's uh it's pretty far up North. It's, it's near Maine and all that. It's, oh, wow. it's really cold okay. there. Yeah. I guess the ice will be pretty thick. Up there it was. North. It was. I think I probably was freaked out for no reason, but I'm going to be honest. There is nothing that scares me more as far as like a drowning death than dying trapped under ice. Oh, yeah. You I can would, see up I would you rather get to him. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's like that movie, The uh, the Orphan. It's the very end when yeah. he falls. That's just, nah. That's, I'm not about that life. Yeah. I'm good without, man. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think just being able to be like, all right, well, listen, you know. I'm too far down because something's sinking me. Anything, anything better than than to be that close to the surface and just not be able to make it. And I know? mean, you could punch the ice all you want, but you you don't have the strength underwater to do anything. Oh yeah, and I mean, we're talking like the there was some spots where the ice was clear, and uh, 
you could see that there was a couple of spots that it had some melt going and it was uh it was getting thinner but on average i mean i would say on average it was like a foot and a half thick in certain in certain sections it was a foot and a half and uh that's from what i could see i think it was that length probably the whole way out there because it's not creaking or doing anything yeah there was um or i should say it wasn't creaking or doing anything for me walking on it there was twice when I was out there where I, you you would hear out across the lake like a big crack. And it would sound like, you know, loud. And it wasn't from me walking on it. It was just the ice changing a little bit. But yeah. I'm a I'm not gonna lie. That made that made my panties a little tight there. Yeah. But it was cool. It turned out really cool. It was it was cool because after staring at it for that many years, I was actually able to see it up close and check it out. But yeah, it's pretty cool. So, Not riding related, but good, good little adventure. <laughs> I want to go ahead and remind the uh, the listeners that this is going to be on SoundCloud and iTunes, and I don't really know much about iTunes, the whole iTunes podcast thing, but I do know that reviewing is a big thing. You write a little comment on stuff you want us to talk about, or uh, tell us the business, whatever you want to do. It doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, give us a new one. I- and it's also going to be on YouTube, so you know, subscribe, whatever. It's going to be under uh, Road Rash Radio. Um, I'm not too sure if I'm putting it on my YouTube or just uh, making a new one for that. We're kind of working the bugs out. Either way, all the links are going to be underneath the the podcast. So, do you have anything else to say before we before we end it? Uh, not really. I think uh, we're trying to have everybody be able to look for new episodes every Sunday. That way, we have the the whole week to put one out, and we'll try to be consistent with getting them out on Sundays. I guess that's it, and we will. See you later. This is Throttle Therapy and Ninja XD signing off.